According to special relativity, and we're going to have some fun today, we have time dilation and we have length contraction in the direction of your motion. So these two formulas are, are represented by delta t equals little gamma times delta t naught. And in this case, gamma for special relativity is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over c squared, so velocity squared divided by the speed of light squared. And so we can rewrite this equation as delta t naught divided by the square root of 1 minus v squared over speed of light squared. And just to get you used to notation, um, this is also sometimes represented as t naught divided by the square root of 1 minus beta. And beta is just equal to v squared over c squared. So that's all the different forms you'd see it in. And then we also get length contraction. And this is very similar. So length is equal to your length proper, or length not. Actually, this is time proper, time not. It's two different ways they represent it. But with length contraction, it's length proper divided by gamma, which is length proper divided by 1 over square root of 1, let's use this notation now, so 1 minus beta, which, of course, is equal to length proper. Um, think of uh, just working with your fractions here. So this is actually going to come up times the square root of 1 minus beta. So that is it in its essence, but now let's run through a, a few quick examples. So one of the ways they actually measure time dilation is they realize that, so working with muons, so you've got muons and they're created in our upper atmosphere when photons from the sun hit the upper atmosphere of earth and that creates uh, very short-lived muons which have a, a lifetime we'll call delta t of, or delta t naught. Um, the way you distinguish is delta t naught or delta t prime is from the reference frame of the object that is moving with that velocity. And the other delta t, uh, just regular delta t, is say observed from Earth or some external reference frame. So delta t, lifetime of the muons, which is also the proper lifetime of the muons they knew was 2.2 um, mu seconds, milliseconds, sorry, which is 2.2, it's been a slow morning, <laughs> 2.2 uh, times 10, or I just do e to the negative 6 seconds. So 2.2 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds. And with this, they knew uh, that these muons shooting in from the upper atmosphere, sun particles hitting the upper atmosphere, creating muons streaming down, and they should only make it about this far uh, before they uh, died out and decayed. But some of the muons are going down a lot further and actually hitting parts of these mountains here and making it down to the earth. So they needed a way to explain why that was happening because the muons only had this very short uh, lifespan. And so you introduce special relativity. So this is one of the, the applications that relativity has is in you know GPS systems, they account for relativity, but likewise uh, dealing with high velocity particles, you need to account for relativity. And so these muons should have only traveled about 650 meters, but what they found is that they were actually traveling about 4,700 meters. So, 
Working with special relativity now, we can figure out that their lifetime in a reference frame, such as standing here on Earth, is going to be different than the actual lifetime in the reference frame moving with that velocity, so the proper time. And you can calculate that by plugging it into our time dilation formula. So we have the proper time for the muon is 2.2 .2 times, just use different notation just to make sure you understand. So 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds, which is the proper lifetime for the muon, divided by the square root of 1 minus uh, v squared over c squared. So in this case, uh, the muons are traveling at a boat, had a velocity of about 0 0.99c. Uh, so this is just uh, an easy way we represent it because it'll make this equation easier ultimately because c will cancel out. So we've got our velocity as 0 0.99c. Of course, that is all squared divided by c squared. So we can simplify this a bit and our time as seen from Earth is going to be 2.2 .2 times 10 to the negative 6 seconds divided by the square root of 1 minus well this is going to be c squared and 0.99 squared so the c's will cancel so we're going to be left with 0 0.99 squared. So let's put this into our calculator now. And we get... ...15.6 um, microseconds. And so from Earth, we actually see the muons, they have a lifetime of 15.6 microseconds. But from the reference frame of the muon itself, it still has a lifetime of only 2.2 .2 microseconds. So this is where time dilation comes in. So as you go faster, uh, your time in your reference frame is the same, but now your time viewed from, say, Earth, uh, at an observer who's stationary with respect to you, well, your lifetime is going to change and it's now going to be 15.6 microseconds. And so we can do the same thing now, working with uh, length contraction. So, say you had a, a spaceship, this is a pretty basic spaceship here going to the right at a velocity of 0. 95C headed to the right and it was a hundred meters long well to put it into the formula now so as viewed by earth in the length proper so sitting in your spaceship and you're pretty happy obviously because you're in a spaceship uh, your spaceship is always going to be a hundred meters but viewed by earth uh, it's actually going to contract along your direction of motion. And that's a very important uh, thing to distinguish, is it only contracts along your direction of motion. So it's going to tra uh, contract, in this case, along the x-axis. So we've got our length proper, which in this case is the length measured by the observer uh, moving at that velocity, so the observer in the spaceship, is 100 meters times the square root of 1 minus uh, v squared, which is 0 0.95c, divided by c squared. And so, you know, multiply, so c squared, and we're going to get 0.95 squared, so these c's are going to cancel. And so our length, as viewed by Earth, will be 100 meters times the square root of 1 minus 0 0.95 squared which is going to be equal to 
31.2 meters. So that's quite the, uh, the length contraction. So in the spaceship, you're going to be 100 meters still, but from Earth viewing you traveling at 0.95, uh, so 95% of the speed of light, the spaceship is only going to appear to be 31.2 meters long. Okay, see you in the next video.